Hey guys, thanks for hanging out with us here at HBCU Game Day. I'm Tali Carr, joined here by the Commission, Dewar yeah. Sharp from the SWAC. He's been here for 14 years. Coach, a lot has changed uh, in the SWAC, and, and you evolve and you keep things going. Uh, one of the big changes coming up, uh, we just heard about this summer, mm -hmm. uh, the SWAC championship is going to end. You guys are going to focus more on the Celebration Bowl. Was that a tough decision for you and your staff? Oh, of course. I thought the presidents and chancellors did a really good job, but a lot of discussion in the room. But I think when you looked at the information and the data, I, I think uh, for strategic planning and long term, I think the president felt like the game just wasn't sustainable and we really wanted to be a true partner with the Air Force Reserve Celebration Bowl. So I, I think they made a great decision and, you know, we'll look forward to moving on in the future. What was there a key point of data? Was it television ratings? Was it attendance? What, what did you guys look at? There? I think the trend really was looking at you in SWAC. You have uh, that four, that five weekend series right there where it's Bayou, SWAC Football Championship, Celebration Bowl, Christmas. And, and, and I think the presidents felt like we were just putting so much on the SWAC fan to, to hit all of those events. Right. And at the end of the day, if one had to leave, if one had to be eliminated or uh, forego one of them, we thought it was best to forego our game. That allows the conference office to turn around and give back more financial resources to the schools at the end of the year, and then to really focus on the Air Force, you know, Reserve Celebration Bowl. Yeah, uh, you know, we looked at the data. Uh, some people were talking about attendance, and I really saw the years, especially where Grambling or Southern were in it back-to-back -back years. Yeah. Those, those were like, what, almost 10 road trips for those fans in sure, that, in that exactly, period of time. Sure, exactly, exactly. And I think if you look from 15 to 16, we dropped 15,000 in attendance, you know, and I thought that number caught the attention of some of the presidents and chancellors. I think, you know, 1,500 you can deal with, right. but when you go 15,000, that's a large number. Yeah, yeah. So I have to give it to you for considering the fans there and the expenses that they are are incurring there on the road. Now, let's talk about the Celebration Bowl. Uh, are, is it your hope that the member institutions will get on the SWAC train uh, late in December and have that conference pride exactly. against the MEAC? Exactly. I mean, no different than the Heritage Bowl some years ago where people marked their calendars by and said, hey, we're headed to Atlanta. But this year, we want, them to say, we want them to do the same thing, but we want them to do it for the Celebration Bowl. So we want everybody to hop on the SWAG train, and we'll see you in Atlanta. Tell me about the MEAC SWAG Challenge. How big is that for you? Uh, you got a lot of matchups uh, this year, I know. Uh, some of them aren't even officially labeled, you know, MEAC SWAG there with the ESPN properties, but you got uh, Texas Southern there playing FAMU, and then yeah. you got the MEAC SWAG games there as sure. well, uh, the official ones. How, how much conference pride, how big is that to open up the season uh, with a bang across the board? Well, anytime you get a chance to play a non-conference foe, especially a MEAC foe, so this year Southern, you know, South Carolina State in Baton Rouge, we're looking forward to it. But uh, again, I think we really look at it from a standpoint, we wanted all of our member institutions to play in the game. So right now, now, I think in SWAC, only one school hasn't played in the MEAC SWAC Challenge, and that's Texas Southern. Everybody else has played in it, and I think everyone who's a, who played in the game comes back saying that was a great experience. It was like a bowl experience. Of course you want to win the game, and we haven't done too much of that, but the one thing we have going for us is that the two games we have won, Southern won them both. So we're looking forward to it. All right, let me ask you this question about evolving the product and, and trends. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people talk about radio, print, television. Some of those technologies are, are on the back end. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at the internet, the ability to distribute your product, it's not necessarily free, but it's not as cost prohibitive as 20 years ago when everything was television and you had to pay all those rights and fees sure. and, and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, where do you see the conference going as, you know, the digital age continues to grow? Millennials are, you know, they're in their phone all day exactly. long. Uh, yeah. When you look yeah. at those things, what is the future of the SWAC and what is the best plan uh, to stay in step with technology. Well, I think that's something we'll look at. I mean, you know, we always talk, we talk about the millennial and we talk about them wanting to be more mobile. So we want to bring you SWAT content on your iPhone, on your Android, on your iPad. So that's the future for us. So whether it's a ESPN3, format or SWAC digital network format. We're looking forward to bringing SWAC athletic events and SWAC culture and SWAC e um, different type of events, not just athletic events, but other educational events to SWAC digital network and to that millennial and becoming more mobile in the future. So that's something we'll definitely look at. Tell me about the challenges, because even what we do at HBCU game day, we're always looking for new platforms and, and some things you can do and then you reach a point. Sometimes you're like, man, I need to know some 
coding or I need sure. to know somebody who sure. knows coding. Right. What type of challenges are there as well? For us, it's really just staying ahead of the curve. I mean, because we have great partners, you know, right now we partner with New Line, who does a lot of our stuff as far as our, our website and our streaming. But, you know, uh, moving forward, we'll look to kind of, how can I say, enhance the technology that we're using now to make us more mobile, make us more reachable to the more, more to more SWAC fans. So I, I think moving forward, it, it's just having that right combination of research so we kind of know where we're going and then planning it and then reaching out to the technology piece so we're able to execute what we have in that strategic plan. All right, the 2017 season is in front of you. What are you looking forward to the most or some of the things you're looking forward to the most? I'm looking forward to the SWAC football championship, the last one, the finale, and then I'm also looking forward to going to uh, Atlanta and being in Mercedes-Benz uh, Stadium. I think that's going to be exciting. Man, I live in Atlanta. I drive past that thing every day. It looks like a spaceship just it does. landed it does. <laughs> beside yes, the Georgia yes. Dome. Yeah. It is crazy. Can't wait to get inside there. All right, he is the commissioner, Dewar Sharp, with the SWAC. Thanks for spending some time with us, and hopefully we'll have a great season coming up. All right, thank you.